Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Jamie. Welcome to episode three of what I'm calling the Experimental Gardener. Uh, today is Friday. It's April something. I've lost track. Uh, 17th. And so uh, I've actually taken off work today so that I can work in the garden all day today because I had another load of wood chips delivered yesterday. So thankful for that. So I'm back to building raised beds today. I've moved around to the front yard this time. And since there are no ordinances in our city against uh, growing vegetables, um, I thought that I'd build a few beds out in the front yard just to see how it goes. Remember, this is experimental gardening, so <laughs> it may not work at all. But what I've done is I've planted a pear tree yesterday, and I've got a plum tree down the other end of the yard, and I've built uh, beds around both of them. And the hope is that I can plant vegetables around these pear trees and do so without upsetting my neighbors because I do live in a, in a pretty close community. We've got a, a lot of houses around us. So my plan is that I've got these fruit trees in the front yard. They're just trees. It just so happens that my, my trees in my front yard are going to bear fruit. And around them I've built kidney shaped beans or kidney, <laughs> kidney bean shaped beds and it's left me room to plant some vegetables. And what I'm planning to do, instead of planting things in rows that would make it look like it's a garden bed, I'm gonna plant them in clumps. So bush beans, I'm gonna plant them in clumps. And from the street, it will just look like landscape plants. I'm gonna pop a couple of squash plants into these beds. And again, from the street, it's just gonna look like landscaping. Maybe a tomato plant or two, we'll see. And I may put a bed out right next to the street with some tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and stuff like that and put up a sign just for my neighbors so that they can just pick that bed and take what they want. We'll see how this goes. But today I'm gonna to be making several shorter videos to show you the progress throughout the day. And I've already got these two beds uh, covered with wood chips. I've got blackberries I'm gonna plant in front of the house on the other side of the porch. I'm gonna build that bed and then we're gonna move back into the backyard and go back to work uh, back there. So stick around with me, keep up with what's going on, and hopefully this can help you build your own garden. Thanks. Well, welcome back. Um, today, like I mentioned just a little while ago, I've taken the day off from work today. I'm fortunate to be able to do this. I'm self-employed, and so today was gonna be a good day to work in the garden. I had that little chips delivered yesterday. Uh, I was at a good stopping point on the job, and so I thought I'd take today and just get some of this stuff done before the rain started in this afternoon. Uh, you can tell it's clouded up a little bit already since this morning. But the radar looks clear for a little while so we can still get some stuff done. Um, today's kind of like a day in the life of a gardener kind of thing. So I'm gonna do a few little videos throughout the day just kind of showing you some of the things that I've been doing. Uh, I built another bed. So far this morning I have built one, two, three, four new beds and uh, I've built building these with wood chips like we mentioned uh, in the last episode or the one before and what I've done with this bed is I have built it a little deeper these these wood chips are about eight inches deep and what I'll do when I plant this bed is I'll go in and I'll dig down to the soil I'll just push the chips back out of the way and dig down to the soil and I'll plant my seeds and as the plants grow I can push the wood chips back around them and that's gonna mulch the plants, it'll save moisture, and so hopefully it'll keep some of the weeds out. Now this is a, a type of permaculture where we're using nature to our advantage instead of working against nature. So this, hopefully this thick layer of wood chips will do just that very thing. And once, once I get the plants established, I shouldn't have to do much else to it until it's time to harvest. One of the things I want to talk about today is uh, what we call edible landscaping. That's what I'm trying to do here. This is my goal, is to create landscaping that's edible. Can you imagine just walking through your yard at any time during the year and just picking something off of your landscaping that you can snack on? Uh, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, herbs, you know, all kinds of things can be grown right in your landscaping. And like I mentioned this morning, the beds that I've built out front, I'm, I'm in the backyard now, but the builds, beds that I've built out front this morning uh, two of the beds <coughs> have one fruit tree each in them. I've put a Bartlett pear in one. I'm back and forth between whether or not I need to get another pear because some of the things I've read says that Bartlett's are self-pollinators, so I don't need a second tree. 
Some of the things that I've read says that they're not, and I do need a second tree of a different variety for cross-pollination. I'm gonna do a little more research on that before I plant another pear tree because two pears, well, two pear trees will be more pears than we could eat or give away. So, I've got the pear tree in one bed, I've got a plum tree in another bed, and in the bed with the plum trees, I have planted beans. Uh, these are just bush variety green beans. We love green beans here at this house. I don't know how you feel about them, but we can eat green beans all the time. And when they're fresh out of the garden, they're just even better. So now, since I want to be a good neighbor, I don't want my front yard to look like a garden. I want my front yard to look like it's been landscaped. But instead of flowers and things of that nature, I'm landscaping with vegetables. Now, I've done that this morning, and again, experimental gardener, we're gonna see how all of this works out. But I have taken the equivalent of a 20-foot row of green beans and planted it in that bed with the plum tree. And the way I did that was I planted my bean seeds in circles, about eight, eight inches across, 10 inches across, and I just pulled the wood chips back till I got down to the soil, planted my seeds and covered them just a little bit. And hopefully what that will do, again, this is all spirit, experimental, but hopefully what that will do as the plants grow, it won't look like a bean field. It will instead look like a landscaping bed where I'm landscaping with green beans instead of with perennials or something like that, mandinas or um, any other kind of or ornamental plant that you'd have around your house. Um, with this bed here, I've noticed today that it gets more sunlight than I thought it did. So I am, I'm, I'm waiting to plant this bed until I see how everything else is gonna work and then I'll see what I need space to put, um, what, what other plants I can put in this bed right here. Now let me say up front, I'm not a professional. I am an amateur gardener. This is, you know, like I mentioned the other day, I've grown up in a garden, but I've never had any formal training in it. I've read a lot of books, I've watched a lot of videos, and I have messed up a bunch. More of the stuff I've tried has failed than has worked. This year, I'm hoping to reverse that. So that's why I'm calling this an experimental garden. Some of this stuff is gonna work beautifully, and I'll have more of that vegetable than I'll be able to eat or give away. Some of it is gonna fail miserably. One failure I've already had, um, we had frost this week. I had thought that I had taken all the precautions I needed to care for the plants that would not be able to handle the cold weather. It turns out I was wrong with my basil plant. So I lost my basil plant the other night. Um, I think it's gonna pull out of it because I think it just burned the top leaves, but this is part of trial and error. This is part of the experimental nature of what I'm doing. It's okay. If I lose that plant, I've got more basil seeds started already, I'll just replace it and then we'll keep going. My cucumbers are already up, so that's wonderful. I will have to watch them if we get another cold snap. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about is with the edible landscaping. There are certain plants that you can put right out in your landscape beds. And if you want to build a separate bed just for these kinds of plants, then uh, here are some of the ones that you can, you can put. They're attractive. You can plant them in a way to, where they will not look like you're planting a garden and you will have fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, those kinds of things that you can just snack on while you're out mowing the yard, what's left of your yard after you get through with the edible landscaping. So a quick little list, and again, Wikipedia is uh, something that I've used. Google is something that I've used. This is from a quick Google search this morning. This is from Wik Wikipedia's page on, on edible landscaping. You can look this up for yourself and get more information than what I'm gonna give right now. But just a quick little list of some of the plants that you can use in your edible landscaping. Artichokes. I don't know how you feel about artichokes. I can take them or leave them. I like them, I don't have to have them but they're a plant that you can grow. Uh, beans, of course, like we mentioned the other day, beans will grow with just about anything. I have two beds with bush green beans in them. I have planted pinto beans, and uh, I want some black eyed peas or some purple holes or something like that, but I don't have them in the ground yet. Eggplant, I'm not a huge fan of eggplant, but I don't mind growing one or two because you know what? Some eggplant parmesan every now and then is nice. Um, Onions and garlic and chives. Now I've got onions in three or four beds already. I've got chives in a bed. I do not have any garlic in the ground. And as much garlic as we eat in this house, 
I need to go get some garlic bulbs and get some planted because we go through a lot of garlic. Uh, peppers. I've got peppers in one bed here in the backyard. I may slip around front and put a couple more pepper plants out front. Um, I just haven't decided yet. Herbs are another good plant that you can use in your edible landscaping. So far, I have basil and sage, oregano, lavender, and uh, something else. I can't remember what it was right now. But all of those are plants that you can plant, not just in your garden, but in your edible landscape beds as well. And then there are flowers that are edible. Do a little research on that before you just go out and start picking flower petals and eating them. Some of them are toxic. Some of them uh, make it a beautiful addition to a salad. Um, and you can just eat them straight off the plant. So just do, do your homework and do a little research and see which ones you can use and which ones you need to stay away from. And then fruit trees and berries. This morning, like I mentioned, I planted a, or I planted a pear tree yesterday afternoon. I planted a plum tree yesterday afternoon. So I have those two beds in the front yard and I have other room or room for other vegetables around those. I've also landscaped right around the front of the house. Now don't tell anybody, but I've planted blackberries right against the front of my house. So if you're driving down the street in front of my house, it looks like, hey, Jamie's just put out some new landscaping beds. That looks great. But what they don't know is that those landscaping beds are gonna have fruits and vegetables in them. It's not gonna look like a garden from the street. It's gonna look like beautifully manicured landscaping, but I'll be able to pick vegetables off of them. So that's something that you can do a little study on. You can spend a little time looking into different ways to do edible landscaping. You can do some research into permaculture and find ways to work with nature instead of against nature. And um, then so later on, as we go out through the day, I'll be building more beds. I've got more wood chips that I need to move. Um, I'm gonna work on my compost. I've already turned it once this morning because it wasn't, wasn't heating up like I wanted it to and I think it was just too dry. So I've turned it once, I've wet it down and added a little fertilizer in with it to kick the nitrogen content up. Um, if it doesn't fire up tomorrow, I'm gonna have to do a little more, do a little more digging and see what's going on with the, with the compost. So happy gardening, I'll check back in later. Okay, welcome back. Um, it's about 1.30 in the afternoon now and so I'm kind of calling this, uh, this episode a day in the life of the experimental gardener. So far, I've been out here since about 7.30 this morning. I have uh, moved probably upwards of a hundred wheelbarrows full of wood chips. I've got four new beds built. I've added to my paths in between my raised beds in the backyard. I've got blackberries planted. I've got beans and squash in the bed out front. I've got, um, let's see, I think that's about all I've got planted. But I'm just going to tell you, you know, like I said before, I'm no professional. Uh, you're not going to get a very polished video. and I don't have any post-production or anything like that. I'm just a guy with an iPhone and a vision. And so we're, we're just going to see how this thing goes. But I did want to show you something. You can't see it from where we're at right now, but I wanted to kind of get you a little closer to what was going on. I've got tomatoes in two different beds. And I told you this is all experimental, so we're, we're learning as we go. Um, one row of tomatoes against the fence, I don't know if you can see them right there or not. Uh, they are planted directly in the soil. I took my garden tiller, I tilled a strip up, I mended it a little bit with some compost, I dug my holes, added compost to the bottom of the hole, some uh, Epsom salt for some magnesium, and some, a couple of calcium tablets, planted my tomatoes. In the bed next to them, where the other set of stakes are, I've put out my early girls and that's a new bed and if you'll remember I told you that this first year these beds are all new and this is going to be very experimental and what I have found if you could see the difference in those two tomato plants is that the ones in the bed the early girls are going to have to have some supplemental fertilizer the ones in the ground that I planted straight into the soil and I planted them all the exact same way with the Epsom salt and the calcium and those are both to prevent blossom rot but I plan them both the same way. The ones in the soil are dark green. They've already doubled in size in the week, week and almost two weeks they've been in the ground. They look beautiful. The ones in the new bed, not so much. So they're gonna have to have a little supplemental food. Um, 
I'm going to try to find some organic fertilizer this year. And it may be that I have to fertilize a lot of things this first year, and that's okay. I'm going to try to do it organically. I don't personally mind using something like miracle Grow, but I do try to stay away from a lot of synthetic fertilizers. But the tomatoes in that bed are going to have to have a little extra attention to get them up and going. There's obviously some nitrogen deficiency just by looking at the leaves. Like I said, I'm no expert, but you know I can tell when something doesn't look healthy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep spreading the wood chips. I'm going to fill in the paths in between my beds until the wood chips are gone. I've got about a third of the pile left that I started with. And then we'll be back after a while, see what else is going on. Well, welcome back. Um, this is a, a day in the life of the experimental gardener. It's closing in on four o'clock in the afternoon now. I've been out here since about 7.30. I have shoveled just about all the wood chips I want to shovel today. Um, you can see the fresh chips behind me in the beds and I've built uh, four other beds today. So we have shoveled a bunch of wood chips. A um, Couple of things. I found strawberry plants. I'm super excited about that. I've looked all week for them. Nobody had any. Uh, I had a one one store that was going to see about ordering them for me, and he wasn't able to get them. So I found some today. The last bed I built in the last little episode is uh, where I'm going to put my strawberry bed. It's over with my grapevines and the kiwi, and it should all be fine together. Um, I want to do a real quick rundown of all the things that I've been able to plant so far in this little spot. You know, like I said the other day, I've got 2,000, 2,200 square feet maybe, and I have been able to plant beans and asparagus and tomatoes and basil and sage and spinach and cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and grapevines and the kiwi and lettuce and uh, carrots cabbage I, I would have, I would have to stop and write it all down to get a complete list but the really cool thing is that in a space this size even though I've got all that stuff planted I've only used about half the seed that I bought so you can see how much space is in between the beds uh, the paths in between the beds when I laid the beds out originally I was mowing in between them and I wanted to make plenty, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room to get my lawnmower in between the beds after the vegetables matured. Because right now it looks like a whole lot of space in between them, but when you have squash vines hanging over the beds a foot and a half on both sides, it gets pretty crowded. So I have a lot of room, a lot of dead room in between my raised beds right now. I'm going to be able to remedy that later on in the season with the seed that I have left over. I'll be able to come back and do a second planting of most things in about three weeks. I might be able to wait as late as a month. Uh, that would put us middle of May, and that should be okay for most of most of the garden vegetables here in Zone 6. I wouldn't be able to do a second planting of my cool season stuff like lettuce and spinach and things like that, but hopefully I have enough shade that I can grow them in the shade most of the summer. We're going to see. This is an experiment, so it may work, it may not. And as we go through the season, I'll let you know what works, and I'll let you know what doesn't. You know, I'm not ashamed to fail you. It just means I tried, and we need to figure out something else and try again. So, today has been a very productive day. Um, I have not addressed my tomato issue yet. I'm going to do that after a while. I've been working, trying to beat the rain. The skies are getting a little darker. I haven't checked the radar lately, so I don't know what the what the radar looks like but it looks like we're going to get some rain this afternoon if i check the radar and we and it looks like we're not going to i'm going to have to water everything because uh, some of the plants are starting to be a little dry and you have to keep the seeds moist anyhow until they germinate so hopefully mother nature will do that for me tonight and if not i'll do it myself after a while i may or may not go ahead and plant the strawberries today uh, it's been a pretty long day already and i'm kind of whooped so uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes but again you can do this uh, you can see behind me it's not a very big spot of ground and i have so many vegetables crammed in there and and i have pretty much used the spacing guidelines on the seed packets even though 
with this type of gardening, you could get by putting them a little closer together. And that may be something I try a little later on. So um, one of my favorite things to do after a good hard day's work is to just kick back and gaze upon my uh, productivity. You know, I know that it's been a lot of work today, but I know that this work's gonna pay off because about starting in about a month, we're gonna be eating out of this backyard and I'll be able to walk out of my kitchen, out the back door, pick what I wanna pick and take it in and wash it and cook it. So it will go from garden to kitchen in less than five minutes and you just can't beat that. There's nothing else that tastes as good as stuff does that fresh. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, doing some canning and stuff this summer. Most of the hard work's over now, for now. Um, it just, it'll just it just kind of cruise for a few weeks now. I'll keep the weeds out of it, keep it watered. And, and I'm probably two weeks before I can start harvesting some of my salad greens and three weeks on spinach and things like that and it'll be about a, a month or six weeks on some of the other stuff. But one of my favorite things to do as I sit and reflect on all that I've done for the day is think about how well this is gonna feed my family. And there's just nothing better than that. And so you can do this too. Now you may be thinking, well, Jamie, that looks like a lot of work. And it is a lot of work. I busted my tail today uh, and I've been been planning off and on for nearly two weeks now. It'll be two weeks Sunday when I did the first planning. And so I'll work during the day, I'll come home and I'll work on this in the afternoon. And, and I know you're thinking, that's a lot of work and I'm tired and my kids are little and, and I just don't have that kind of time. Well, you'd be surprised. If you'll block out 30 minutes or an hour a day, that's probably all you'll need after the initial planting. Now, I have done a lot of work on this to get these beds built but remember i'm starting from scratch this year you may be too and that's okay uh, there's uh, there's nothing quite so beautiful as the hope of a new beginning so as i sit and and reflect on today's work and plan for tomorrow because tomorrow's saturday so i'll spend another day out here tomorrow um, there's one thing that never hurts as a gardener and that's to sit back and relax with a nice beverage so until uh, until we can get back together again, cheers. This is Jamie. Thanks for hanging out with me in my experimental garden. Take care.